I've been so excited to make this video since when I finished my car the first time, I had a lot of questions on how I did the engine bay. So today I'm gonna show you guys some of my ideas and how I do them. But first, who remembers where we left off? In the last video, we did a lot of work on the RB motor and determined a lot of parts that it needed. And most of them are on order or back order. So the engine isn't ready to go, but that's okay. The engine did not need to be completely ready. We just needed to be able to put it in the engine bay. I expected that to fly all the way off. <laughs> So now that it's in the bay, we can finally start thinking about how we want the tubs to be in here. And then we'll also test fit the intercooler piping, the intercooler, and then also the intake as well. And if we get to it, maybe even the radiator, because we are going to have to notch this core support for the RB. But all right, let's get started. First thing right off the bat, I'm going to start by trimming back the rest of the stock fender well, because we don't need this. And while I'm trimming that up, I'm also going to weld in some caps here so that the core support can be fully attached to the shock towers because all of these dimensions have been figured out in previous videos so we know that they're good to go and before i weld or grind i always fill in all of the open holes with towels or something so that no debris gets inside the engine then i'm also going to cover it with this moving blanket just to be extra cautious the last thing you want is to have a weld bead fly off of here and then melt some random wire and then you're chasing electrical issues later not good <laughs> Beautiful. So now we can start cutting off the rest of the wheel wells, but I wanted to note that both of them were previously hammered in from the car that I got this off of. You can tell how this is all beat up and smashed. They were probably trying to accomplish more wheel clearance, which is the whole point of doing tubs. So we're gonna do this nicely. Hopefully we can get this part straightened out enough, although I don't really need any of this. It's just nice to have it look good, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, now the engine bay is looking super open. We have all of this room for activities on both sides. Now you're probably wondering what is the best way to make those arches that look nice and smooth. And I'll tell you my secret. I use a trailer fender. All you need is one trailer fender. And what I do is I just cut it right down the middle, nice and straight. And one side will come with a nice curved edge like this. And the other side will just be a 90 degree bend. Yeah, so here's that curved side. And then this is the 90 degree bend side. So before I cut it, I like to look it over just to make sure that it's all good. And I'm noticing already that there's a small dent right here. If I cut this in the middle, this will be towards the bottom. If I make sure that this is on the passenger side, right hand drive. So I need to take note of that. This is just observing and just being aware of what you're working with. And if any of you guys want to go this route using this trailer fender, I'll leave this link in the description. I don't make any money off of it. I'm not sponsored by them just purely for if you guys want to use this. This will be the third engine bay that I make using this exact same trailer fender. Hopefully this video can inspire you guys to clean up your engine bays. <laughs> All right, let's split this thing in half. It's really important to make sure that you make straight cut lines on this because you don't want to mess up your trailer fender. Perfect. Now we have two of these. To make it obvious so I don't forget, this is the dent right here. Now when I look at this, I'll know this is the dented one. So we'll keep that on this side. We're gonna do something like this. Obviously not this deep. Get this one, put it over here. Okay, so these are obviously way too big at this point, which is why I said it was important to put the dented side down because we're probably gonna end up trimming all of this off anyways. So now that we have the trailer fenders ready to go, we're going to test fit the intercooler and the intercooler piping because that will tell us how far the intercooler pipe will go from here to here. This is the angle we're trying to clear. When I did my tubs, I messed up by welding all of this together before I had intercooler pipes made. So I just kind of guessed on this dimension and it was really hard to swivel around this tub and also fit an intake filter. Hello, beautiful.
foreshadowing boosted Integra someday? Someday, I hope so. <laughs> With stuff like this, I've always found it easier to mount the intercooler first. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, we have the intercooler loosely mounted. That way we can still move it around a little bit if we need to, because when we're test fitting the new pipes, it'll be nice to be able to move this a little bit if we still need to. So let's take a look at our pipes. Oh yeah, I love fresh material. All right, nice and shiny. Now let's see how they all fit. Another puzzle. <laughs> so just to make this easier, I've organized all of the parts by size. So these are all the same size, same size, same size. Same with these. And obviously this is the biggest one, so I'll know for sure that this goes to the biggest clamp. And you can tell the size obviously by looking at it or they'll be etched in here. So generally speaking with intercooler pipes, the smaller diameter is gonna be on the hot side. And the hot side is a side that goes from the turbo to the intercooler as opposed to the cold side, which would be from the intercooler to the throttle body. Now it's referred to as hot side and cold side because after you drive a turbo car, you can literally feel the pipe on the hot side, it'll be hot, and then you go to the other side and it'll be cold because the intercooler cools. So all the terminology actually makes sense. <laughs> So far so good, first pipe is on. I'm just gonna guess that this one's probably next, just based on that angle. Now I like to put the intercooler clamps facing down, meaning like the bolt is facing down. So that way you can still access them if the bumper is on the car. It actually looks like this needs to come up some. Now uh, we're already hitting. And that just shows the importance of doing this. <laughs> so you know your measurements. You have to make a cut. I'm going to take this pipe off for now. That's why I didn't tighten anything yet. And this one as well. And while I'm thinking about it, I should probably cut the rest of this off as well. Oh yeah, more room for activities now. All right, let's see how that fits. All right, we'll put the last coupler and the other two clamps on here. Now, I wanted to note this, just as like a small thing to make your engine bay look a little nicer. I'm matching up all of the clamps next to each other. It looks way more tidy when everything is all lined up nicely. These aren't tightened or anything, but this is obviously just a test mock-up. Little detail is what goes a long way. That's looking sick already. All right, let's get this side figured out. Sick. Everything lined up perfectly on this side. And this little extension is for the idle air control valve. This thing is looking super cool. Man, that's so satisfying. Well, that's a big relief. One more thing that I can check off the list, intercooler pipe fitment. But I can't take these off yet because now I need to lay out how this is gonna fit on here. And then I need to put an intake filter on here so I can see how much clearance I have right here. And they don't have to put on the radiator as well. But while the intercooler pipes are on here, I am gonna tighten all these down. Not like cranked, like I'm gonna drive it, but just enough so that these aren't just wobbling around. And I left the intercooler loose for that fitment, but it fit perfectly, so I'm gonna tighten this and then all the little mounts on the bottom there. OK, 
Okay, everything is nice and snug down. This is a very nice kit. This is actually the kit from Injuku. And I ran this intercooler before and the car did great and it worked great. So that's why I went with another one. Now we need to mount the radiator because we have to have all the items in the bay before we know for sure that it's good to go. And for those of you with RBs in your S chassis, you know you're gonna have to notch the core support at least a little bit to fit the radiator because you won't be able to fit fans with the harmonic balancer here. It's too big, not enough space. Let's line up this radiator and see where we need to cut. So here's our cut line all the way out to here and then all the way across to that side. And since we're making a cut, we're going to cover up the engine. All right, we got a nice straight cut on there. Still a little bit hot. There she goes. All right, so the radiator's on there and we sank it into the lower mounts, which are right here and right here. And now you can see how close it is to the water pump pulley and the harmonic balancer. It's actually touching it right now. This is about how far back I cut my last radiator support, but I'm not able to pull this forward any further. And that is because the lower radiator support is catching on it on both corners here and here. So when everything is out, we'll have to modify that as well. At least now we can get a good understanding of if we can fit an intake filter here. I had a big problem with this the first time I put the RB in my car because I forgot to leave room for an intake filter. And this is the one that was on the car and the one that survived-ish the crash. So we're going to use this for a mock-up. So this is about where it's going to sit, I guess. Which, I mean, kind of works out for this opening here. The previous owner of this core support had already notched this, probably for a mid-mount intercooler or something like that. But in our case, it kind of works for airflow for the intake filter. At this point, everything is connected. So now I can really decide where I want to put the trailer fender wheel arches. And we know we have this limiting factor here. I just now remembered the math also has to go on here. I'm still running a stock ECU on this motor, so I do need to run the math still, but I have no idea where it is. It's probably in this box somewhere. Well, I'm gonna have to worry about the intake and math situation later because I don't know where the math is. That's all right. At least there's a big enough hole here that I know for sure I'll be able to fit something and make something work. So now let's focus on putting the tubs in. So I'm thinking something like this. I want it to be about, right about here, whatever this measurement is, one pinky knuckle length. And I want the length to come out to about here, which is right at the edge of the clamp of the intercooler pipe. As for the depth, I want to line up this first bolt right here all the way back. This is where I want the curved section. So right here. So this whole tub needs to be shifted over a little bit. But as you can see, there's some stuff in the way. And I'm also going to need to trim some of this away. And then we'll work on lining up all of this backing so we can close it and make it look really nice. Now this is important to note. I started with this side because this is the side with the limiting factors of this intercooler pipe and this intake filter here. This side, the only limiting factor is this intercooler pipe with this idler control valve fitting, which is much farther back than that intercooler pipe. So I can mount this up all day and have this match the exact specs of that side. So I would recommend starting with whatever side you have a limiting factor on. All right, at this point, it looks like we need to do some grinding. <laughs> Probably chop away the rest of that corner and that corner as well. While I have this grinder out, I figured it'd be good to mention this whole seam here is known to rub your tire really bad. And in some cases, puncture it. You can see this is literally factory. The way that they just let this overlap and leave this super sharp edge is sticking out. <laughs> But this is where the factory harness is supposed to run on both sides, which if you have a lowered S chassis, that's probably one of the first things you should do is relocate this harness because obviously it'll rub through. So I'm actually going to cut most of this off because it's going to rub eventually. So I might as well fix it now. I'll probably have it flush with this lip right here. Then I'll finish this seam all the way out to here. You can kind of see there's a little slice right there. It's probably where I'm gonna match. Now we can go that much lower. <laughs> 
So obviously if you're gonna cut off something like this, this is pretty structural considering these are like the only spot welds that hold the shock tower to this lower cap here. We are going to need to grind all of this paint off and weld the seam all the way across. And honestly, probably grind off all this adhesive in here. We'll probably do that later though, but you can see it's already peeling off. I mean, it's 30 years old, so it's kind of understandable. Then we'll tack a few extra welds in here just to strengthen it up. So since we've cleared out this section here, this is now the new low point. And when I do tubs, I'll usually cut this whole section all the way along here. Because if you don't do that and you're drifting the car and it's low, you'll find that this is always rubbing because this is now the new low point of the car. So since we've determined we want the height of the tub at this line, and we want the depth to be this line, we know around this area and down, we're going to remove this marker would work. <laughs> So when I cut this off, I'll probably leave more than this amount because that's really not too much to build off of. Probably cut it another half inch lower than that. You want to be generous to leave yourself enough metal because it's easier to trim more than it is to add. Both can be done, but one takes longer. Okay, we're going to start with this. So everything below this line, we're going to cut off. And again, we're going from our depth measurement and our height measurement. I feel like the intersection point will be somewhere over here. But again, I'm leaving myself enough room just in case. And if you're thinking to yourself, why would you cut the shock tower like that? That's a very structural component. Well, this metal is really thin, a lot thinner than I think it should be. So later on when we box in the tubs, we're gonna use 16 gauge, which is thicker than this. And the tubs are also thicker than this. So either way, it's going to be stronger than it was from the factory and look a million times better in my opinion. <laughs> Weight reduction. <laughs> wow, that looks super ratchet like that. <laughs> All right, let's test fit the tub once again now that we've cleared up some space. Okay, now I'm gonna need to make some measurements. So you can see it's bottoming out here on this corner. So I'm gonna need to trim back here. And this line here is the edge that we wanted to match up here. So I'm going to measure from here to here and cut that from here to here. All right, it's looking much better already. So we have this little corner snugged in there. Now our edge lines up with our line here. Now we have to verify our length. So as you can see, this little edge is kind of gapped out right here. I could just fill that in with weld or a little piece of scrap metal. What I'm gonna do instead is cut a curved line right here and straighten it out. That way this can mate up to this shock tower very nicely. Ah, I missed the contour a little bit. Oh yeah, that's much better. Just my knee is holding this up, so I'm not able to get this like perfectly sitting in here, but I mean, that looks pretty good. I can close that up real nicely. And it's at the right length. Since we're satisfied with those dimensions, we're gonna make some markings so that when we pull the RB out, we know where everything was supposed to be. So I've drawn some intersecting points here, here. That'll show the intersecting points going this way and this way. And then as for vertical, I've drawn this line and this line to show that they go up to here and up to here. So when you imagine these four lines in a 3D plane, they will all cross in this box right here. Basically all in reference to this clamp right here because this is the one clamp that we're worried about clearing. So because we drew that side, we're gonna draw this side just in case. Now obviously there's many ways to go about this. This is just how I'm doing it. It doesn't take much time. There's one more RB25 specific thing that I need to clearance, which is the speed sensor. But as you can see, it is hitting the trans tunnel, which is super not cool. So we're gonna make a little box for this also. This marker does not like to draw on dirt. And lastly, we can tack in the motor mount brackets. Smokey. <laughs> well, I guess without further ado, we will begin 
the process of yoinking this back out. And if you haven't already, don't forget to drop a like on the video. I appreciate it a lot. And she's out. Well, I apologize for having to chop this tubs video in half, but there's just so much content and I went so far in depth that I'm gonna have to make two videos out of it. Originally, that wasn't the plan, but I wanted to make sure I made these videos in a way that if someone was watching this and wanted to do tubs on their own car, they would have a really good idea of how to do it. So yeah, hopefully this video helped. And if you wanna see any additional details in the next video, let me know what you wanna see. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around and hanging out with me. And as always, merch is for sale in the description. See you guys next time.